Okay, so what I want to do for this video is go over the concept of recursion. Now, I know some people have already learned it, already gone over it, maybe have a decent understanding of it, but maybe not understand kind of the ins and outs of it or have a decent view on how it works. And also might think it is completely fine to use in all situations. Now, what I want to do in this is not go over all the pros and cons, all the benefits, times you want to use it, times you don't want to use it. That would take a incomprehensibly long time. But for what I want to do this is to show exactly how it works. And it's very, very simple, honestly. Now, what you do with it is usually not so simple. But let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's just stop over. Here we are. And so just recursion. Now, before we begin, everything that we've done in this class so far is iterative. So whether that be loops, whether that be just simple function calls, whether that's, uh, say, dealing with pointers, it's just basic iterative programming. Nothing complex, nothing complicated. Well, your mileage may vary, but nothing too outlandish. But as we approach our nonlinear data structures, you're going to notice that we're going to have to approach them in a different way. And by that, it's going to be a recursive way because we're going to be moving on to trees. Specifically, we're going to be going on to BSTs and AVLs, which are all forms of binary search trees. So we'll be using tree recursion as our means of traversing these trees. And for that, recursion is very, very good. For the example we're going to use in this video, it's really bad. And I'll try to explain that to a degree, but in this example, it's very easy to explain how recursion works, show how it works at a low scale, and how as it scales up a lot, it can get pretty bad. But regardless, what is it? Recursion is essentially just having a function call itself. So you want to do some form of computation. Um, pretty common examples of recursive style algorithms are going to be factorial, Fibonacci sequence, uh, binary search trees, uh, certain sorting algorithms that use divide and conquer approaches all use recursion. Again, it really just depends on use case and approach. The first two I mentioned, Fibonacci and uh, Factorial, we use them in terms of recursion because we operate pretty quickly. We can do it iteratively as well. Both ways work, but the nature of it is recursive, but your implementation have to be. If you implement it with actual recursion, it is pretty bad. But while it's something that needs to be used with caution, it's not always bad and like I said the tree traversal is going to be very very good at that. Now Fibonacci sequence in terms of explanation recursion is really good in terms of implementation it's not. But how does it work? So let's just talk about Fibonacci sequence real quick understand what that is and then show how it works both iteratively and then how it'll work in recursion. So Fibonacci sequence is just going to be a series where each number is the sum of the two that precede it. So usually it starts with 0 and 1. So let's just do 0 plus 1 here equals 1. So the 0 plus 1 is 1. Then we have 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 8 plus 13 is 21. So on and so forth. You can see how this pattern keeps going. So this has a recursive pattern to it doesn't mean you have to solve it recursively, but in terms of how it works, it is going to have a recursive approach to it. So 1 plus 2, 2 plus 3, 3 plus 5, 5 plus 8, 8 plus 13, so on and so forth, and it keeps going. Now, the illustration here is going to be more of an iterative approach. You can see we have just step-by-step -step approaches here, whereas if we wanted to look at it in a recursive way, then you kind of have a tree developing here. So even at a very, very simple five, 
this tree is already a height of four, it looks like, in terms of its recursion, which is pretty complex, honestly, already. And you can tell that if we just continue right down, this is going to be Fibonacci of four, the height's only three, Fibonacci of three is going to be two and one, it's going to be one and zero. And you see, it gets far less complicated the lower you go, and you'd expect that. But let's say we have six, now it's going to have another height added to it, and seven has another height, and as you keep going further and further, your recursive approach is going to get very out of hand very, very quick. I think I ran the code that you're going to see in the next few slides uh, a few times around inputs of 40. And I think that took a pretty new laptop around 11 seconds to compute. Then I did 41, that took me about 17 seconds. 42 took me around 25, 43 took me around 30, uh, let's say it's 25, 33 or so. And then thinking about 50 was taking me a little bit, probably well over a minute. So it climbs in terms of its growth rate very, very poorly. If you do the iterative approach, it's, it's, it's near instantaneous. It's very, very quick for those inputs. Those are very small inputs, but with recursion, this tree here grows quite, quite quick. And that's why it's good for trees in terms of traversing this. It handles very well if you have a well-balanced tree. But let's take a look at this. Now, Fibonacci 5. This is the actual value that we want to compute. So the way it works is we're going to have it return Fib of 4 plus Fib of 3. So these are the previous two inputs added together. Obviously, now we have to solve Fibonacci 4. So we return Fibonacci 3 plus Fibonacci 2, but now we have to solve Fibonacci 3, which is 2 plus 1. And 2 is going to be 1 plus 0. 2 again here, 1 plus 0. Fibonacci 3, 2 plus 1, 2 is 1 plus 0. And our base cases, our breakout cases, are 1 and 0. They'll just return the actual values of 1 and 0. Zero, one zero, and eventually, once you've called all of these are individual function calls that return this value. So eventually, this is what your final value will be. You can see as this number grows larger, you're going to have a lot more function calls. So that's why this approach, in terms of recursion, is good for explanation and bad for implementation because it's going to grow out of hand very quickly. But this is pretty simple. And again, just kind of drive it home, this is kind of what we're working here. This is a pretty simple illustration. Again, if we do Fibonacci 3, all we got to do is just return the values of Fibonacci 2 plus Fibonacci of 1. And then you would solve Fibonacci 1, which is just returning the value of 1. Fibonacci of 2 is returning Fibonacci of 1 plus Fibonacci of 0. And this Fibonacci of 1 is going to return just 1. And this Fibonacci of 0 is going to be 0. So eventually we have 1 plus 0, which is 1. This is 1, so we end up 1 plus 1 is going to be Fibonacci 3, which looks like it's going to be 2. Yeah, so this should be a 1 here. This is a 1 here. 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. 1 plus 1, Fibonacci 3 is 2. So again, this is just a very, very simple illustration to show the actual return calls and how many functions are actually being computed. And again, it's very good in terms of illustration and explanation of what's going on. But as you saw, even just here, this five already adds on this layer of complexity. The four adds on this layer of complexity and then the five adds on yet another layer of complexity. And as you keep growing, it's gonna add more and more. And if you know anything about these trees, you can tell that it's getting further and further, like it's, it's really deep down here on the left side as opposed to the right side over here. That imbalance is going to continue to grow, which means its efficiency is going to be absolutely detrimental. That will get explained once we get to binary search trees and AVLs, but I digress for now. So, in terms of code, there's two functions. We have a main function, and then we'll have this Fibonacci function that we're going to call in just one second. But for the main, all we're going to do is just take in some integer input from our user. That's going to be this uh, numval cout and cn aspect here. It's going to store user input. And then we are going to use a while loop 
to continuously call Fibonacci to get our entire sequence. So it's going to start at zero and go until the action number that we input. Now it's going to compute every single iteration of this as opposed to just one iteration. But essentially the whole point is this line here. This is the beginning of our recursive algorithm. This fib i is the same thing as this fib 3 or this fib 5. That is our root essentially. And it's going to grow in complexity as we continue to call this recursive function. So this is deceptively simple. It has an if statement and this is going to be our base case slash breakout case. So if the current value that's being passed in is less than two, which is zero or one, then it's going to return our current value. And you can tell that here with this return of one, return of zero based on Fibonacci of one and zero, it's just recurring the actual integers one and zero. That is where the recursive call breaks essentially. Because we're no longer calling it recursively, we are just returning actual integer values. However, if we have a value greater than two, or well, greater than or equal to two, then we are going to call our recursive function. Twice, actually. So we'll do fib of our current value minus one plus fib of our current value minus two. That's going to be the previous two inputs in this case. So once we call that, then we're going to end up with another function called here, another one here. And as we continue to compute that, it's going to continuously call a new branch of that recursive algorithm until eventually that branch boils down to a zero or one. Again, we can see that happening kind of here. Let me just erase this. I might be swapping back and forth a little bit here. So let's imagine that right here we call fib of three. Okay, so this is our first call, fib of three. So if we consider that the beginning of this, then we will say, okay, if current value is less than two, then return current value. It's not. So immediately we're going to return Fibonacci current value minus one plus Fibonacci current value minus two. You see that? Here's Fibonacci current value minus one and minus two. So now we have two branches going on here. So let's do the easy one first because current value minus two is gonna be one. So current value one is less than two. We're just gonna return one. And you can see that right here. We return one and we're done on the right side. However, for two, that is going to be not be less than two. So we end up with two minus one, two minus two. This is less than two. So we end up returning just one. And then here we have zero is less than two, so we return just zero. So eventually this one comes back up here. So I'm gonna put one right here, plus a zero, add these two together, and this will return a one. This is a one, so it's gonna return a one, so one plus one. And then finally, we will return a two to our main function. So that is essentially how recursion works in terms of Fibonacci sequence. And it's going to continuously call itself until it reaches our base and our breakout case, however you want to call it, which is whenever it equals one and zero. Now, I've already said, and I want to again drive this home, that this is not a good implementation use case of recursion. You would want to approach the Fibonacci sequence on an iterative approach because the, this is going to become a very, very unbalanced tree. You can kind of see that here. It's already starting to get fairly unbalanced. The left side is far deeper than the right side, and it will only continue to get further unbalanced. And that means it would be a very, very uh, inefficient approach. Inner approach doesn't have this issue. However, again, this should be a very, very good illustration and understanding of how recursion works, how we're calling ourselves, 
and what's actually happening, how the data is being computed at these base cases and being returned back up the branch to our original call and then back to the main function. That illustration aspect there, people really struggle with that, understanding how is the data being returned back recursively because understanding that we call it over and over and over again is pretty easy but visualizing what's happening with data is a lot harder to do so hopefully this video has helped with that hopefully you understand a little more on how recursion itself works how the data is actually being transferred back to the main function and then why our breakout and base cases essentially are very very useful but also and I cannot stress this enough recursion in and of itself isn't bad it's what you do with it that has potential to be bad again if you try to do Fibonacci factorial or more of a simplistic algorithm that doesn't need to divide and conquer with an inefficient approach then yeah that's gonna be bad a hundred percent that is going to be an inefficient expensive and overall just not a good approach to doing something however and I want to stress this even harder it has potential to be very very good again with trees recursion is very good in traversing trees now some trees are going to be more efficient than others and that is the whole point of BSTs versus ABLs because if we can keep our tree balanced on both sides then you don't end up with potentially just terrible worst case situations you're gonna have pretty average use cases in terms of traversing and searching through that tree and that's something I kinda wanna stress in the next few videos but this has gone on a lot longer than I wanted to but um, recursion has always been a topic that a lot of people both my peers and back when I was a student, since I've been teaching, since I've been working as an engineer, a lot of people just have a trouble of understanding when and when not to use recursion, why you'd want to, and why you wouldn't want to. Just the whole mix of it can be kind of complicated. And there's a lot more in-depth information of why you would, why you wouldn't want to use it. Like, it's really bad in terms of memory management. Uh, some languages, some interpretive languages just are not good with it so if you're like doing like rust c sharp a lot of stuff with memory management you really really don't want to use it but with c and c plus plus it's pretty good if you handle things correctly obviously but i think i'm gonna wrap it up there for now it's enough rambling from me so hope you guys learned something hope this was useful information and hopefully you do understand recursion a good bit better so see you guys around thanks for watching i'll see you later